It's Monday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, and this is Admissions Lives. Today we are talking about engagement strategies for overbreak. Admissions Live is part of the Higher Ed Live Network, offering professional development webcasts and podcasts. All episodes of Higher Ed Live are free and accessible in the archives at higheredlive.com and on iTunes. Today's show would not be possible without our awesome sponsors. Chegg Enrollment Services connects the nearly 80% of college-bound students researching schools across the web with the colleges who are trying to reach them. Using online platforms that include most popular college search sites online, Chegg can help you save over 90% on the cost of traditional methods for generating your inquiry pool. Email outreach at chegg.com to schedule a free consultation. Welcome to College is Redefining College Fit. They help higher education institutions optimize the highest leverage decision point in the college selection process, the college visit. The, their web platform and professional services are giving college innovative tools to connect with prospective students before, during, and after the college visit. Face it, from the very beginning of your career, you've never had that professional stamp that says you're an expert in en enrollment management. Well, now you have that opportunity. Albaline Christian University New Graduate Certificate in Enrollment Management provides four highly interactive online courses that can be completed in as little as 10 months. Combined with unique residency component, the program is designed to help enrollment management professionals expand their knowledge and give them a credential to set themselves apart in the field. Visit acu.edu slash enrollment management to learn more. So, welcome. One of the best parts about being live is that we get to interact with you. Live viewers can be part of our broadcast right now by sharing insights and asking questions on Twitter using the Higher Ed Live hashtag. You can receive weekly updates with live show dates and times by subscribing to the Higher Ed Live newsletter. And I'm your guest host, Erin Sapinka, and I am currently the social media manager at Dartmouth College. Our e early decision notifications were just sent on Friday, so it's been a busy weekend for me and the admissions office engaging sharing with exciting students. Uh, my first guest joining me today is Sarah Barrell, Student Support Specialist and Social and Digital Media Coordinator in the Academic Support Center at Rochester Institute of Technology. My alum, uh, that's where I'm from, yay! <laughs> and my other guest is Mike O'Neill, a Social Media Strategist in Marketing and Communications at Ithaca College. And today we'll be talking engagement strategies over that pesky winter break that some of us are already in the middle of. <laughs> me. Um, welcome Sarah and Mike. So just to kind of kick things off, let's hear a little bit about the breaks that you guys are currently heading into. Right now, students have been gone at Dartmouth since before Thanksgiving, and they won't be back since January 5th. So we're right in the middle of our break. We're, what does what your break look like, guys? Well, um, our students at right now are currently in finals week. Um, they just started finals week, and um, I'll be finished by the end of the week, and then they'll be gone until, let's see, June 19th, I'm sorry, June, J uh, January 19th. They wish it was June. Um, <laughs> that'd be one heck of a break. Um, so January 19th is when they get back, um, and um, there's a first full day of um, Martin Luther King's um, celebrations on, on campus, and then they start, they start cl classes on the 20th. Okay. We're sort of different over here at RIT. This is actually our second um, winter break. We just moved from quarters to semesters. So our students are in finals week now. Then our institute is actually closed for a week and a half. Um, and then they come back and we start uh, what's called Tiger Term. So they actually have a chance to take classes for three weeks, either online or in person. Um, not a huge amount of students take those opportunities, but our campus is still active and in full service. And then classes for spring semester start up January 26th, um, and we have orientation for those new admits for spring the week before that. Okay, cool. Um, and so going into like the first week of coming back, so you have that orientation program, Sarah. Do you want to talk a little bit about kind of the content that you're ramping up? When do you start sending it out? Um, What's kind of your brainstorm process for those pieces? Yeah, this is actually the first year we'll be running one. Um, the Academic Support Center was asked by the orientation office to run a pre-orientation program for those new admits. Um, so we're still in the process of brainstorming content ideas, but I think what's going to happen is we're going to run it very similar to what we did for orientation and have sort of a, a week of countdown to spring semester um, tips and tricks for incoming students. But instead of gearing it towards those first-time freshman trans, uh, 
transition skills, talking a lot more about RIT culture and what might be different here academically versus, you know, the college they went to in the fall um, or maybe they didn't go to college in the fall. So really focusing on, you know, the unique sort of quirky things that go on here at RIT and um, welcoming the students for the orientation program and, of course, doing a ton of live, live tweeting and posting during the program. Um, and just trying to keep things really light and fresh. Um, my students are actually working today, um, creating some really awesome infographics on tips for starting for, uh, spring semester. So trying to keep it really colorful and light, things students are going to want to see and read during the intercession when they're not really focused on, you know, RIT. Okay. And then, Mike, you mentioned a little bit that your, your first day back is your MLK celebration. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how is the content planning and strategy revolving around that since I mean, you'll be gone, campus is kind of off, and things aren't operating as normal. Yeah, so we have an orientation um, for um, our spring semester students that come in uh, for the new student, new student orientation that goes from the 15th through the 18th. Um, so we'll definitely be posting um, some of the highlights um, that um, students not only should, be, should get excited for, but also just some tips about what they should know, um, some dates and um, things that they should know about. So um, we'll start kind of gearing up with, with that um, since we, our college is also off um, for almost a week and a half, I guess, um, from Christmas Eve through um, January 2nd. So, um, you know, when we come back, um, a lot of it will be kind of business as usual, getting um, content going, but um, then also definitely looking at um, what some of the festivities are planned for Martin Luther King Day and, um, and start, um, you know, creating content around that. Okay. Aaron, one of the biggest things we see is... Um, as you know from being an RIT, or, um, students coming back from co-ops. Um, so we have a ton of students that have either been out all summer and fall and haven't taken classes in maybe a year. Um, so we really have to focus our content on them too and, and sort of that transition back into the academic world um, and touching, you know, what they're, they're gearing up for. Um, so a lot of our stuff is just about refocusing um, you know, getting your brain going during break, whether it's doing, you know, reading blogs or articles or doing, you know, puzzles and, and brain teasers. We'll go off and search for a lot of that type of content. Um, because we're the Academic Support Center, we try to keep it more academic focused, but in a really fun, engaging way. Yeah, um, I've seen some of the work that Sarah's been doing, because as I, we've mentioned, I was a student there, and it actually is very fun, engaging. Um, oh, just the tips and quotes and stuff that they do, and they kind of connect with graphics or images so that it catches your eye when you're on Facebook anyway, and then you actually take the second to read it. Um, luckily at Dartmouth, we've been kind of, sand our early decision just went out Friday, so we did a ton of promotional stuff whenever the decision went out, kind of opening up the Facebook group, getting out all the different Facebook profile photos and stuff like that with, I'm accepted, going to Dartmouth, um, and then also just kind of curating that conversation, and so that's been a really awesome content gathering of stuff, for instance, um, there's people mentioning stuff about what they're excited, and so me on the back end and behind the scenes is working on different design, cover photos, stuff like that, um, that fit those interests with just things that say Dartmouth Class of 2019 or Dartmouth 19 is our hashtag, just kind of listening and putting out content so that we're still engaging um, these students, even though the campus itself is kind of on a slowdown of things that are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and the other thing is we're doing a Facebook admissions face chat with our Dean of Admissions just again to drive attention to the audience that we're trying to still engage with and interact despite this kind of lull of campus activity um, at least on the academic side and the students being gone and so by having these different opportunities to interact students are still seeing a lively campus or at least people that are still interacting really um, a lot of the time. Um, so, if you guys, how does your content scheduling break down over break? So, for instance, for me, I post two to three times on Facebook, and now I've already, I'm already down to one, and we're only in halfway through our <laughs> break. And so, what is your kind of breakdown before and after break? Well, we're just coming out of a big contest, um, so we've been posting a ton this week. So we'll start slowing down starting. Thursday. It's the last day of finals. Um, I think we're going to post maybe once a day over the holidays, um, maybe even less than that. Um, 
although we don't want to lose our followers because of our contest, we just got a bunch of new followers, so we want to keep them engaged. Um, so we're thinking once a day um, using our, you know, our scheduling service at its fullest. Um, I'm losing my team as of when tomorrow Wednesday, Hi. so my students are gone, so it's all on me. So um, I've been trying to schedule like things out for the next couple weeks, um, and uh, you know, doing it a little bit less frequently, um, and enough like multiple different times a day, so that we're keeping the the, the people that we just got active and not having to wait a whole month for them to see content from us. Yeah, and um, you know, we'll probably post. Um, a few times a week throughout. Um, I'm going to be scheduling some posts for um, not just uh, we have a, um, a student magazine as well as an alumni magazine so there's content that I can pull from both of those um, which is really nice so being able to um, you know um, put that out there um, and hit a, a lot of different audiences is really great. Um, I've also um, been kind of working on some photos and things that um, will kind of give a gist of, of what the, the campus is like. It, um, one of the things that I've been working on throughout the year actually is taking a picture in one spot um, and being able to kind of show in one picture the progression, um, the, the same photo in the four different seasons um, that kind of brings back nostalgia for alumni and students um, and then kind of gets the prospective students excited about you know what um, the different seasons can can look like. Um, we also have a tradition here of um, two of the the um, uh, first year students um, housing uh, building dorms are um, towers. Um, and every year, what they do is light up rooms. Um, so on, they put the the number. Um, so last year was thirteen. Uh, one tower will have the one. One will have the three. And they'll flip that um, when it goes to um, from January 31st to, I'm sorry, December 31st to January 1st. Um, and that's a tradition of um, that we, we've had for years. So um, that'll be another point that, uh, that we can put out there. So definitely scheduling is going to help, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely the little culture things or the campus pieces that students or prospective students and alumni, basically your whole potential audience misses when they're not on campus or they want, or prospective students specifically always kind of want to see, well, what, what is the cool thing or what, what, is, what makes my school different than this school or what makes it stand out. And so those little traditional pieces are pretty awesome to share. Um, we do a Christmas tree lighting every year. And this year, I just captured a short nine-second video right on my iPhone, not super high quality, posted it to Facebook, and we have 5,000 views of just people saying, like, oh, look, like, yay, Dartmouth, yay, holidays. So just those little moments that can sustain. Like I said, it's still getting tons of hits, and that happened a week and a half ago. And so that's kind of sustaining my end of content and always just saying, remember when this happened, or just pushing those moments up. Um, so a couple of, I know Sarah definitely mentioned, and that the student magazine that you mentioned, Michael, um, that student produced content is gold across the board, but especially in perspective and admission work. Um, how are you still getting the awesome content despite students going home and being on break um, or saying, I'm, I'm not working, I'm, I'm off? Well, I'm super lucky to have a dedicated team, and they're actually offering to work remotely <laughs> over break, which is fabulous. Um, but you know, I, even though we have more time during the winter break, it actually takes more planning. Um, I'm trying to get as much content out of them before they leave. Um, they made uh, we have a YouTube series that we put out, and they made a, a video for us to launch right before the semester starts. Um, so that will be there, um, and that's all student content. Um, a lot of their graphics that they're still making currently that will be relevant over intercession will post out. Um, and we're also launching a blog series. Um, so we're hoping to launch that early in January so that that will be student-driven content. Um, but you're right, you don't want it to scream, Sarah's in charge over social media this, <laughs> this next month. Um, and it, I think it can get draining. You know, you had, you had asked us about how we keep balance. And um, when you're constantly in you know, especially this time of year in the holiday rush, the last thing you want to have to be doing is glued to your Twitter account um, and managing that. Um, so the more you can do before your students leave um, and the more you can get them scheduled and set up 
Um, and if you do have a good student team and have the resources to pay them over break, um, it's really helpful. Um, and our students are always willing to come back early and, and work with us. So we'll have our student team here for or that orientation program, which is great. Um, but, you know, it's hard for them, too, because they're sort of on finals, you know, brain drain, too. And uh, so we're just trying to squeak out the last bit of creativity they have <laughs> and before they head off for the holidays. Yeah, and um, we also have a, an awesome team here um, that um, I won't utilize as much over um, the winter break as I did. Um, you know, for Thanksgiving, we utilized them to kind of help kind of spur on a, um, a, a thanks um, Twitter campaign just to kind of get people to say what they were thankful for. But, um, you know, um, there's a lot of alumni events where students are um, invited to, to attend over break. Um, so trying to get that kind of content and connecting them um, is great for both um, you know, different audiences for the overall IC accounts. So um, trying to get content that way, uh, as well as whenever they meet up with uh, college friends, both um, who have graduated and who are current students, um, always happens over break as well. So um, trying to, to spur on that kind of um, content, you know, the posting that kind of content is... Um, pretty helpful in, in getting people talking and connecting with each other. Definitely. Um, speaking of uh, campaigns um, and stuff like that, what kind of content are you guys pushing out for yourselves? Or is there any, for instance, here I'm thinking of doing a winterum campaign because people, that's what Dartmouth calls their long break, um, seeing what people are doing because we do have a lot of opportunities where students go do study abroad or go and do stuff with our Dartmouth Entrepreneurial Net Net Network. Um, are there any campaigns that you guys have up, up uh, brainstorming or working on that you would like to share with me? Um, I know for us, for our, our Tiger term, um, we're really focusing on the online student, um, students that may be taking three-week online classes. And, and some of our students even go off and take online classes at other colleges. So um, I know that we're launching some virtual um, resources for students, so we'll be pushing that out. Um, we're hoping to do some um, Google Hangouts workshop style that students can plug into um, while they're taking those online classes, or maybe they're back home at a community college, you know, doing some work. Um, and then also, we'll we'll do sort of a, a campaign gear up coming back the week before. I think I mentioned, um, but you know, we're I think with our contest just ending, um, and we do a huge final exam contest just because that's sort of what our brand is here in the ASC, um, we sort of take a step back from the campaigns, and then we'll amp one back up right when the semester starts in spring. Um, but we're just trying to get students to connect while they're gone, um, whether they're working or taking classes, um, and trying to get them as many resources that may be different for them than when they're here on campus um, and can just walk into an office for help. Yeah, and, and we, um, you know, staying connected, keeping uh, students connected is, is really um, the key for us. Um, we don't really have any campaigns either. Um, we have a, a big campaign that, that comes in around um, Valentine's Day, so we kind of start getting uh, people prepared for that, and um, then we're going to have a, um, a giving day that's at the end of February. So there's there's some um, bigger things that come in as, as the semester starts, so um, keeping students connected and making sure that they're still kind of listening on the on the channel is really I think the most important thing for us. Cool. Um, we do have a question from the Twitter sphere. Ashley wants to know how do you balance scheduling posts versus timely relevant content that can't be scheduled? So those moments when the Christmas tree is getting lit on campus versus the tips that you can schedule out for a couple weeks. Well, I, what I try to do is, especially for these last couple weeks um, and the, moving forward, we have a calendar and, you know, I make sure I have certain areas that are posted for um, and then I leave gaps. Um, and really, <laughs> I'm that person on Christmas Day that will probably have my phone in my hand, <laughs> uh, much to my mother's dismay. Um, but, you know, you have to, you know, if this is sort of the role you're taking on, you sort of have to stay live and engaged and active so that you can, you know, tweet back or respond to people that have questions or post back um, things that are going on that you may want to repost on campus. Um, 
So no matter what, no matter how much you schedule, you still sort of have to be mobile and on the go in this in the social media world, um, especially students are 24-7 nowadays, and you never know what's going to go on on campus, um, especially when we come back after the holidays. I mean, January, it's, you know, a lot of people are off, but, you know, campus is open, and we'll want to keep students, you know, let them know it's a big snowstorm, here's everything going on campus, hopefully not, but um, we'll want to make sure that that's there. So. Um, with the students gone, a lot of that will, will fall onto the professional staff for me here. Um, and it's just making the time for it and, and making sure I plan ahead with my work. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's kind of the same thing. You know, planning ahead is, is really key. The, um, the, the towers changing over for New Year's um, that I mentioned before, um, I can't be here for that. So it's trying to see if there's somebody um, who lives in the area who will be staying in the area um, that I work with who can you know, take a picture of the before and after and get it to me um, mm -hmm. as soon as it happens so that I can I can um, post it both on Twitter and Instagram, oh, you know, all over the place. So um, so that's key um, as well as um, there are some things that just kind of happen. I mean, this is my this is going into my second year at this point um, at IC and, and last year um, around Christmas time, um, a lot of students started getting their acceptance letters and um, started posting on there. So mm -hmm. there's definitely some things that, you know, I can't plan for that, obviously, and um, I just have to be uh, prepared to kind of jump online um, uh, pr sporadically and kind of um, congratulate students and get them really excited and, sh and share their excitement. And um, it doesn't help that my phone is constantly connected to my hand, so um, it's, you know, kind of second nature anymore, like, kind of like breathing, I, I feel like, so, um, you know, it's, uh, sometimes it's not necessarily making time, it's just the fact that I've all of a sudden find myself, um, you know, um, getting back online and, and, uh, and connecting with them, but, um, yeah, there's definitely some things that you can't schedule that happens um, that you just kind of have to, um, find the time to do for yourself. I think, you know, it's, you know, Mike made a good point, you know, as with doing social media, I have found that I don't go anywhere without my tablet or my phone. Um, and we actually provide our social media students with tablets as well so that no matter where they are on campus, they can snap pictures or videos like Aaron, like you said, you know, just take a quick raw video. And sometimes that's the most engaging content, you know, so if you're walking around campus and there's a big snowstorm and you catch students with a snowball fight, well, you know, students love to see that things in alumni and prospective students because it shows like the, um, the softer side of what's going on on campus, especially during the winter break. Um, so we just try to get out and about and, and Mobile technology, I think, has made it so much easier for us to do our jobs. Um, I always say, you know, if it wasn't for my phone, I'd be attached to my laptop. So um, you just sort of have to go with it and, and, you know, make sure that your coworkers and your family sort of know, you know, what is expected of you beforehand, um, that if you just need to take a time here or there um, to make it happen. Definitely. Um, so that actually leads me into our next question, which I think is something we definitely really always forget about being people who work on social and are always engaging. Um, admit Holiday breaks are busy for especially admissions folks and across campus with people just taking that time to plan and figure stuff out, that sometimes we forget to be human and to take the time for ourselves to spend time with our family, turn off the notifications for a half an hour or something like that. How are you planning to make sure that you guys stay human and engaged with your families and stuff like that when you are technically off um, during this break? Well, there's a couple things. I mean, you know, I think that's where scheduling systems and platforms can, can come in really handy, that you know you have some things scheduled. If you miss a comment here or there, you know, everyone needs that time. and. Even though social media is 24-7, there may be a little bit of a lapse. Um, the other thing I try to do is I, I involve my family in it, you know, so um, I'll bring them onto campus. Um, we were here this weekend for a hockey game, and, you know, I was able to get some pictures and put things things out about that, but they were also enjoying it. Um, or involve my kids in it, and they love to see the new videos that my students create um, and help me post them out, so just, you know, um, I'm creating future social media geeks just like <laughs> me. Um, but just trying to um, take the time, um, turn the phone off. I've actually, you know, actually done that, turn my phone off and put it away. Um, and there will be certain days where I'll plan ahead for that and either trying to find someone to cover for me on that day. Um, but you sort of have to plan for that downtime. Um, and you can't just turn your phone off and, and, and uh, 
and go away without sort of a backup. Yeah, and, and I think it's also, um, I mean, just as, as important as scheduling what you're going to post is scheduling when you're going to be down mm-hmm. um, as much as possible. Um, and, as, and though, you know, we have a week and a half off um, here, but um, though you want to technically be down the entire time, you, you just can't. So um, just making sure that there's definitely sometimes um, during that point where you know for sure that, you just don't want to be distracted um, by work and really be able to live in the moment with your family, you know, during uh, Christmas morning, things like that. Um, you know, really important times where you want to ha- be able to have time for yourself and, again, be human. So um, scheduling that and kind of making sure that some content can be posted around that, you know, just um, having a, a tweet that says Happy Holidays with a nice picture of campus with snow or something um, and having that scheduled to go out, you know, if it's um, during Christmas morning or that kind of thing, um, at least would help you out in, in some ways. So um, that kind of thing is, is really important, I think. I think, too, you know, especially on the holidays, I was doing it over Thanksgiving, too, um, taking the moments where you know you can, you know, I have a 45-minute car ride between, you know, houses that we have to go to for the holidays, so using that time to get on and check and make sure, um, using technology to your advantage, so making sure everything is mobile, so all of our content is stored in, a, you know, cloud storage that I can access, whether it's on my tablet or on my phone, so I never have those moments of, oh, no, i got to go grab my laptop, and i got to open it up and, and figure this out. It, everything is mobile and right there, so if you have a really good system set up um, and you can grab things really quickly, it, it's, you know, a few minutes here or there that, that can really make it easier for you to ease your mind and, and de-stress. Um, and I think if you have a social media team, making sure that they're on mobile too so they can, you know, you can text them or chat with them and say, hey, do, where is this graphic or where is this content? And it's very easily accessible to everyone involved. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a definite, like everyone's been mentioning, is that scheduling is not just meant for posts and making sure that your posts go out at a, spe- at a specific time. It's also so that you're not losing your mind trying to get the perfect thing set up to go out right at 9 a.m. You have it all set up two days in advance or something, like for a holiday tweet or something, and it just goes out. Um, another huge piece, I think, is setting up communications with your team before you go. So are either either of you working with any of your colleagues on kind of developing a strategy, or are you taking on the brunt of it over the break and just kind of doing a, I'll, uh, these are my days off, and I will get to them when I get back on? My manager is really great about um, kind of stepping up and um, being able to take some things on if I if I need her to. Um, most of the time, though, I, I honestly I think it's it's faster um, I, and sometimes easier for me to just um, kind of do it myself and um, you know kind of take on that burden, I guess, if you will. But um, but it, it so it's a, a little more I guess I put a little more on myself than um, than I should, but. Um, but it's definitely nice to be able to say, hey, you know, be able to, to text her and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to be down for this period. Um, can you, you know, post this or respond to any tweets that are coming in because of accepted students, that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's pretty much me that professionally runs the the, the accounts. Um, I'm Like I said, I'm very lucky to have some awesome, passionate, um, dedicated students. So, like, if I know I'm, I'm going to be away, you know, I'll... Um, see what their schedule is like. We just went out to breakfast this morning and sort of had a chat about what what break is going to look like um, and when they're available. So I have their schedules and I keep actually in my calendar. Uh, people think I'm crazy, but I use my Outlook calendar um, to schedule like all the social media stuff so that people sort of know when I'm down or when I'm not. And they have my team has access to it. My supervisor has access to it. So when I put reminders on there, like make sure I post that. Make sure someone posts that. So we we you know, as organic as social media needs to be, it, is, it needs to be so planned, um, especially when you have breaks and, and intercessions and um, campaigns coming up, um, because if it's not planned, then you're going to have those moments where you're like, oh no, there's nothing going out, we don't have content. Um, so we try to make sure that everyone has a day, and if I need to be away, I, I find a, one of my students to cover it, um, or worst case scenario, someone around here. Um, but we, we're a big fan of using our scheduling systems, too, so. Yeah, you know, I, we have a social media um, 
a lot our email accounts here, um, and I also use Outlook to um, post on that calendar. Um, you know what things should be scheduled when, so that you know, God forbid, I get hit by a sleigh and reindeer, um, <laughs> and uh, you know somebody can jump right in and and uh, be able to to post things that were supposed to be scheduled, or at least you know watch for things that were scheduled to to go out. So. That's. I think having your content accessible is so important so that there's other people, like Mike said, if you get hit by Santa, um, there's someone else that knows um, where the stuff is. And so we try to use um, our cloud storage and keep things in, in folders that are very specifically labeled um, so people can go easily grab graphics and, and content. Um, we also use some note-taking systems and create a schedule um, and actually say what's supposed to go out. So if there is a technical error, someone else can jump in and, and grab that information. It doesn't have to regenerate the content. So we don't rely just on you know Facebook and Twitter to generate the content. We keep it hosted elsewhere as well. Um, so if there is something wrong, um, we can we can go back to it and easily grab it. Yeah, share um, the ability to share stuff in between colleagues and stuff is super helpful. Um, even just in a day to day, the other day my computer was just fried and it was not working. And the fact that I was <laughs> able to email my boss from my phone and say, "Here's yeah. where everything is. It's supposed to go out. I don't know if it's going out. Can you make sure it goes out?" Um, was really super helpful, and it went off without a hitch because there were those plans set up just in case something yeah. goes wrong, or if I need to access this from my phone while I'm driving to Grandma's house, I can <laughs> still do that. Um, so I think, I know that I'm in this a little bit right now, but getting stuck um, during this time whenever you maybe don't have this, the awesome students to throw ideas off of or kind of your uh, gut check with other people saying like, well, should we do this? Do you think this will work well? Where do you guys go for your really inspirations during this time? I am a Pinterest junkie. So um, with being academic support, you can find so much stuff and ideas and sort of inspirations on Pinterest about content. Um, you'd be surprised how much people are pinning up there with social media content. Um, and it's mobile, which is great, so you can just hop on the app. Um, we also like to go to a lot of the, we found that a lot of the articles from you know, USA Today College or College Hack and things like that, um, students really like. It's light, it's, it's relevant, it's, you know, brand worthy. Um, towards you know our mission but it's also something fun for them to read so in the worst case scenario you can always go on to some of those you know BuzzFeed type places um, and grab things that you know students are gonna like yeah and um, I'm actually an a Instagram junkie so and there's a lot of you know fun things on there uh, inspirations on there that you can get as well um, and actually a, a, a lot of the um, picture ideas that I get um, a lot of times come from Instagram, for instance, you know, when I was mentioning the four seasons in one photo, um, that's something I've seen a few people um, that I follow on Instagram do. So, um, you know, that's a really great place to go um, to get inspiration. Um, there's definitely a lot of things that I find on Twitter um, that um, can also be helpful in, you know, following some students and seeing what they're talking about um, and um, seeing if there are ways to... Um, kind of repurpose that content um, for us to get um, people engaged is also really helpful too. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I was just saying this the other day, is is for someone that's going to be coordinating social media and you're, and you're the voice behind, you know, the department or the college's account, you really need to be out there and looking at what other people are doing on social media because it can be very inspirational, you know, and in this world, I don't think collective borrowing is wrong. And you might see something that's working awesome at Dartmouth, and I might say, hey, Aaron, can I, can I try that over here at RIT? Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with getting inspiration from other universities. I try to follow some other, you know, big, you know, what is the hot Instagram account right now, even if it's not a college or institution, and just seeing what, you know, the 18 to 24-year-old population is relating to right now. So, you know, going off and finding brands or, stores or, or chains that the students are really, you know, into and seeing what they're doing and how can we sort of make our content, which isn't so sexy and fun, um, edgy so that they can relate to it in the same way. Definitely. Um, trend jacking, I think, is a huge, huge resource and it's inspirational, like Throwback Thursdays and Transformation Tuesdays. <laughs> Any, those are such low-hanging fruit in a sense when it comes to things like, okay, I'm really stuck today. It happens to be a Thursday. Well, here's a picture of campus from 70 years ago or 
stuff along those lines where it's just nice and easy and it gives your, you kind of a break when you're really running low on the creative juices. Um, some of the other resources that I really like, collective borrowing, hello, yes, I am a huge follower of several hashtags in Twitter chats like Strategy Car, um, HESM, uh, just things where people are sharing what they're doing or just talking about in general, like, here's something I'm trying, definitely check it out. Um, and socialmediaforcolleges.com is my daily check point for things that other people are doing, because usually the be some of the best stuff ends up on there, and so it's just really easy to find all of this great content in one place from higher education institutions. So it's, it's really focused on colleges and what they're doing. So, for instance, a holiday video where you show campus as a funny holiday video where people are like the president is one one video was cleaning like the glass of a basketball hoop and like just trying to show that like oh nothing goes on here when students are away and just playing with the audiences and having a good laugh while creating something that's engaging and kind of fun to be around um, so I just want to remind anyone watching that they can tune in and ask some questions on Twitter using the higher ed live hashtag we're gonna keep talking a little bit more about content um, so the so with students being away on break and all the like and this whole time do you guys do any kind of playing with projects that you might try on the DL see if things work out um, I know that I use this time as kind of a let's see if let's float this past some people maybe we'll do like a faculty profile let's see how that goes do you use this time to experiment and try things out yeah, I'm actually going to um, go crazy, and we're, we're going to try some um, virtual workshops over break and see how sharing the links to the workshops over social media work. Um, we don't get a ton of attendance at our workshops over break um, for the Academic Support Center, um, but you know what I was thinking is maybe students aren't on campus. Maybe they would come to them if they could watch them from you know their their homes on their computer. So we're going to see if students you know catch on to that. Um, I don't know what to expect. Um, if it does work well, I'm, I'm hoping to push it out um, into into the semesters. We have three international campuses and also students all over the country on co-op and taking online classes. So if we can get virtual workshops very accessible via social media um, using, we have a, we use Adobe Connect, um, using platforms that they can log into and, and watch. Um, I think that that would be really successful. So we're going to give it a go and see how it works. We have the time over intercession, so why not? I think um, the winter break is nice too because it's it's literally um, a mini version of the summer break. So um, you know, summer break is is great for trying new things and experimenting and seeing what works and what doesn't, that kind of thing, and and then planning. You know, um, so you know, one of the things that that I've been thinking about for a while is, you know, is Snapchat something that we want to get into and, and start working on um, here. And so um, I think that I'm going to really kind of delve more into that um, over the break and play with it and um, with some of my, some of the students on my street team um, and, you know, see what works and if I can get a create a strategy that works for us um, around um, Snapchat and or maybe I can't and then I'll know that from the other way so um, either way I'll know um, whether or not we should uh, be on it or not so um, yeah it's definitely a great time to, to be able to experiment and, and try new things yeah it's definitely a good time to be playful um, for instance uh, some of the photos the first snow of the season was November and that was a huge, um, uh, just an opportunity for people to play with the fact that we got like a sprinkling of snow. And it was just something that I threw up on Instagram really quietly, kind of saying like, well, let's be sassy and fun on, on Instagram. And it just blew up. And so then we were able to, I was able to say, look at how well it did here. We can totally share it to Facebook and Twitter. Had it flopped, I would have just been like, oh, nothing happened. This <laughs> didn't happen. Nothing happened. Um, so I... I have, you guys have given me a lot to think about because this is my first planning content for a very, very long break. Um, I was the student last year who kind of got to say, I'll weigh in when I'm free on break and sharing content, but um, we've been tweeting out some resources, so make sure to check those out at Higher Ed Live. I definitely have the socialmediaforcolleges.com going out. Like I said, that's something I check all the time. 
regularly. And I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, and thanks to our always awesome program sponsors, M. Stoner, Chegg, and welcome to college. And I'm Aaron Spinka, and Ryan Catherwood will be here tomorrow with an all-new Advancement Live. Thanks, you guys, so much for tuning in. I know you're trying to get all your stuff in before break. <laughs> uh, have a great day. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks. Have a good one.